In this video, I will show you how to troubleshoot and fix a trunk that will not open with the remote or manually with the latch. So my specific car model is the 2013 Ford Focus, but what I'm going to show you will likely work for other cars, especially similar model Fords. The short version is that you should check your fuse. If it's not your fuse, check your wiring going into the trunk and if it's not the wiring, it's probably the actuator. So that's really all you need to know. The rest of the video is just me fixing the wiring on my car. So you can continue to watch it and hopefully it will help you get started. So the easiest, wow, that's bright. The easiest thing to check would be the fuse. So to find the fuse, you go to the passenger side door. There's a cover that covers up the fuse box, so you can just remove that. The fuse you want to look at is the second row and the first one up is the 10 amp fuse. So you want to pull that out and look at it and see if it's any good. So if you look at this fuse, you can see it's kind of burnt and black, it's burnt out. If that's what your fuse looks like, then simply replace that and that will fix your trunk. Unfortunately, this is another fuse for me and I pulled my fuse out and it looks fine. So the next thing to look at is the wiring. Okay, so our trunk will not open from the outside, so we actually need to go to the inside to open it. To do that, you want to drop the back seat down. And then, if you look all the way down, there's that uh, glow-in-the-dark latch. You'll need to pull on that to open the trunk. So I'm going to go ahead, crawl in there, and pull on that. Hey, so... I'm inside the trunk now. For the wiring, the part you'll want to look at is you basically follow the wiring all around the trunk and then come over to here. And you'll notice at this area, all of the wires are totally bent. And uh, yeah, so this is what we're gonna check out to see if any of these wires are bad. All right. So I don't know if you can see this, but there's a wire right here. I can see bare wire. So that is not ideal. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna cut this cable tie. Should be doing this with wire cutters, but I can't find any. All these wires seem pretty well intact. Even this one that's bare. It's still connected. These all look good. This electrical tape is disgusting. So I'm looking over here and I think I can see just a wire poking out. Uh, yeah, that totally looks like a wire poking out. It looks like it's held together with tape over here. I'm gonna see if I can Oof, this stuff is nasty. This is a terrible design. Don't do this in the middle of the summer, in the middle of the day, when it's 100 degrees outside and you're in a trunk. Yeah, that's some good advice. Some sound common sense there that just about anyone would think of. All right, um, electrical tape is the worst. But yeah, this looks like a solid mess of wires. So this wire's definitely broken. If you follow this back to the actuator, you'll see that this does go to the actuator. So I think this is the culprit. This wire is just about to break off. Um, I think this goes to a tail light. I'm gonna go ahead and fix this while I'm here. This wire is exposed. Might want to fix that as well. You can see like two other places in this wire that are bad. That's, um, these are not great wires. I'm gonna go wash my hands of all this sticky goop. Maybe get some WD-40 and I will be back. All right, so one thing you can do, just if you want to verify that this is it, if I've got enough bare wire, I've got my remote here. You can plug this up. 
Don't know if you could hear that, but that was definitely the latch. So yeah, this is 100% the problem. I'm gonna get a solder iron, um, some shrink wrap. We're gonna come back and fix this. Okay, so here are the parts I'm going to use. I've got, I found me some wire cutters, so I'll use that to cut the wires. Some wire strippers, I'll need that to strip back the insulation. I got some shrink wrap to put over the bare wire. A torch so I can put the shrink wrap on. I got a solder iron and some solder. And I got a portable battery that I'm gonna plug the solder iron into. Hope it works. Yeah, that'll be interesting if that works. Um, if that doesn't work, I'll need an extension cord and then a wet rag so I can clean off my solder iron. A light, if I need it, probably won't. But yeah, I'll post all of these tools in the description below so you can see what you need. Okay, um, I should say, you should probably start by unplugging the fuse or something like that. Um, that is the smartest thing to do, but apparently I am more lazy than I am smart, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start working on this. Let's get this wire. So you can have a good connection. Oh, that hit me in the head. Let's get me some shrink wrap. So I got me some nice pre-cut black rolls of shrink wrap. Let's get that going. Oh, it is still hot. Fancy that. Okay. Wow, that's a cool torch. <laughs> that's way cool. Good job, cool torch. This thing's awesome. All right. So if you're wondering most comfortable position, it's definitely lying on your back in the trunk with your feet dangling out. If you're wondering the most awkward position, it is also lying on your back with your feet dangling out. I cannot see what I am doing, but at least I don't have to lift my head up. Okay, here we go. Let's torch this guy. Whoopsie. Okay, that's a good size. Get this going in. All right, I went ahead and soldered it. My camera wouldn't let me show you because it got too hot and my camera's dumb. Boo, Sony mirrorless. I like you, but I also hate you. Let's put the shrink wrap on, if we can. Yeah. Let's go fix this screen dude now, doing the same thing. Oh, which by the way, should always test. Yeah. All right, I made three fixes to the green wires, the main black wire. When you're done, you can get cable ties to uh, fasten them all together or velcro or something like that um, I don't have any of those right now so I'll do that later but probably just use velcro but boom let's try it out all right here we go moment of truth <laughs> I did it. Okay, so if it's not the wiring that's bad, the last thing it's likely to be would be the actuator under here. Now it's Almost definitely not that for most people, but if you verified your wiring's good, your fuse is good, this would be the next thing to look at. So you just take this apart. Um, and then I would suggest putting a voltmeter up to it and triggering your remote and seeing if you get any power. Um, I'm not gonna show how to do that because I don't need to and I don't think anyone will ever need to. 
that's almost definitely not gonna go bad, so check your wiring, check your fuse. Those are the two easiest things to check. Hope this video was helpful. Thanks.